Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today is the third, wow, the third, jeez, it is the third of May 2021. We've had loads of engagement from you, the valid viewers lately, uh, which is great. Obviously, more engagement, the better. However, it, it's gone crazy. You've sent so many valid viewer requests in over the last weekend, about 25. You know, there's no way in heck that we could ever hope to service them. So I've got two choices. One, slightly change what we do. Or two, just ignore you. Probably best not ignore you, so we're slightly changing. We're creating a new style of video that we'll do once a week or something called Super Questioned. What we do is we take uh, four or five of your valued viewer requests and we just do a quick two minute thing on each one, making a 10 minute video, and we service four or five of your viewer requests on one video. The first viewer request for today is from question mark. I apologize, I forgot to get your name in my haste. Your question is, will just a single laser guided bomb with a single laser continue to track the target if the laser is turned off? I'm gonna laser my bomb, I'm gonna let it catch the laser. Then while it's only been riding the laser for a few seconds, I'm gonna cut my laser and see what happens to the bomb. Try and get this sort of right air to ground, master arm on. I've got my bomb mode, auto, M fuse, instant code. I'm going to go 1588 because we need to deconflict from a uh, JTAP that's in the area, which is a bit annoying, but suck it up. And I'm going to turn my laser on. I'm going to put my flare on. I'm going to designate my particular target, which is going to be that APC there. I'm going to go manual laser so I get full control. Uh, I'm going to turn my laser designator on the teapot on to 1588 enter and that is me done i'm going to drop in 11 seconds okay drop my bomb a bit off but i should do manually lasing right i'm going to watch that bomb catch the la my laser now 5088 is it going to catch yes there it's caught now i'm going to turn my laser off check it's off completely turn my laser off and let's see what happens to that bomb now it should in theory go ballistic and just miss everything uh, we think. And that's exactly what it's done. It's just gone into the middle of a field. I don't know how it does that now. It just skips away. So what happened there was I stopped lasing uh, after about three seconds worth of it following the laser and it just went dumb. Uh, simple as that. We're going to change that slightly now with RC. He, We are going to do the same thing but when he cuts the laser it'll be much further down the bomb's travel. So Okay, manually lays. I will track the bomb, so I can tell you what to do. I'm going to let it track now for a little while. It's probably just going to go ballistic. Okay, you will cut your laser in. Three, two, one. Cut laser now, please. And it's gone ballistic. And there you go, it's missed. That's it answered. It goes ballistic. It just free falls. Simple as that. Next question. So let's set the scene. We've got three laser designations in the view of the bomb that's dropping. They're all on 1688 PRF. It's chosen one. The one it's chosen is based on the video that we did last week and the logic that determines which it chooses. But if the laser that it's following is turned off, will the bomb A go dumb and just die or b will it switch to the next laser laser designation that's in its target let's go and find that out there are three targets ahead of us near each other there are three lasers lasing on prf 1688 one from a jtac one from me one from rc the jtac and rc are just going to laser their target I'm going to laser my target and drop a bomb. Halfway through the bomb's fall, I'm going to cut my laser manually and we'll see if the bomb will then skip onto one of the other guy's lasers. Dropping 20 seconds, right? You laser your target. Oh, it's got the guy at the bottom right. Uh, JTAC's got the guy at the bottom left. I've got the guy at the top left. Okay, I'm going to drop the bomb. Bomb's dropped. Manual laser. Laser started. Okay, so we can get the bomb tracking and to make sure it's going to track mine. There it is. It's called it. It's definitely going for mine. We know it is because of the video we did last time. What I'm going to do is back to cockpit here. I'm going to get rid of my laser and make sure it's turned off completely. Okay, there is no chance that that is now lasing my target. Oh, it switched to yours. Look at that. It switched to yours. Did it? Yeah, it really did. What's your bomb set to? 1688. Okay, so it's... So, um, let's click up. What happens if I shut my laser down that it's tracking, it then goes to another laser how it decides which laser to go rc's or the jtac i don't know and i don't really want to go any further into finding out the priority because we could be here for days but the interesting thing is if it loses one laser 
it will then try to reacquire it, finds another guy's laser on the same PRF and, and, and does that. Very interesting. And the third valid your request from King Camo. I have my doubts on whether this is modelled or not. In the Huey, there is a wire strike blade above the centre of the cockpit. I always wondered what this thing is. Do you know the thing I'm talking about? The kind yeah, of Yeah, exactly. I know exactly what it is. I I thought it was thought it was an aerial or something. I no. never how weird is that? There's wire cutter on uh, top and on the bottom. Oh, wow. It's to cut a cable in the event of a wire strike, the cable from entangling the helicopter blade. So we've got this guy here. This is showing the, the top one. So the wire will hit, you know, that flange there or that flange there, filter into there and get cut, apparently, which I think is absolutely amazing. Let's go and try. We've got our cutter there and our cutter there, which I never even looked for before. Again, I just thought it was an aerial. So... Amazing, really. I mean, in theory, the wire should hit there, like right through us, go up, and then be cut. So as long as we kind of hit the wire, we should be able to snip through all those wires if this is modelled RC. Okay, here we go. I'm going to need some KE, so I'm going to get... Wow, this is a stupid idea. We thought this... I'd... Something Basically, happened. You just hit him on your windshield. Something happened, RC. Oh, I'm dead! Yeah. I decapitate myself. No, I'm not. I've lost control of the chopper. I don't know what happened, RZ. Oh, the wire's on fire! Uh. One thing you wouldn't have expected to happen would be the wire on fire. You see that? They must have changed yeah. the code lately to uh, add, whatever the word is, um, interactivity with the wi wires and um, so that it's, a, it's an object now. Do you go out of control, Luke, like me? No. Well... Or is that just your natural, ridiculous flying? No, I don't have any. I don't have any pedal. Oh, three. I can tell you why. Shall I tell you why there's something wrong with you? Did I lose my tail rotor? Yes, you did. So what happens is it kills the tail rotor. Is what yeah. happens. That's the bit that's modeled. Look! 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 It went right through my cutter. I couldn't. I don't know if you can see my screen, but I could not yeah. play that any better. Do you see that? Yeah. Now I'm not going to lie, Valley viewers. That was what we call fluke. Part of the uh, system. Wire strike system isn't just those two cutters. Mm -hmm. It's also that strip down the center yep, of the, the uh, windshield. Right, that the, the stops it snagging yeah. on something. There, it went right through my cutter. It's gone right through my cutter. Well, technically, there, but you can see. And let's see where it, it's gone through my plane. Look. Wow, this is well called. Oh, look, there's the impact. It's on the tail. The, the detection, the crash detection is on the tail. Oh, yeah. That's just how the damage model works, you know. It says, am I in the tail, yes or no? Yep, you are. How clever. There's some fire, they're setting it on fire. I'll have to slow it down and seeing like, all the, the, you know, the <laughs> algorithms working. Very clever. Anyway, uh, clearly it doesn't work, but thanks for the question. Cap, the Vietnam era daisy cutter used to have a kill radius of about one mile because of the concussion from the large bomb. Do you know if the Moab is similar? In DCS, I'm guessing he's asking. I can't answer the real one. Perhaps you could do a test by spacing out soldiers at 100 meter intervals and see how far out the blast will kill them. So here is the BLU 82B and C-130, the old daisy cutter. Total weight of 15,000 pounds. I think from memory, the Moab's about 22,000 pounds. They're kind of you know 20 percent bigger but let's go and find out okay valid viewers we're on our hercules we have a moab that's a big bomb we've got stretched over two miles m4 infantry these middle ones here are at 250 feet spacing then we go up to 500 feet spacing bomb bay doors open yes sir prepare to deploy yes sir Landing. here we go Oh, wowza, look at that. Pause. Because people are running around screaming with their hair on fire right now. Ground zero was there. So total... 
don't know if it was radius we were looking or diameter, but let's go for diameter just for now. Holy Banalza, 0. Point, God, that's well modeled, 0. 0.7 nautical miles, however many feet that is. Can someone give me that? It must be about 5,000 feet. But the radius is about, you know, 0. 0.37 nautical miles. So we haven't done that super realistically, but very roughly speaking, about 2,250 to 2,500 feet radius of that bomb is going to kill a person. That's absolutely enormous. That's like the size of a village. It will just nail all, the, all of the infantry and or cows. Well, there's your answer, Mr. Law. I hope you enjoyed those four valued viewer requests. The runway is out of action.